in honor of Mother Wendy. Baby, when I tell you that Morgan is slowly beginning to get on my everlasting nerve, God darn it. In the words of JJ over there on Bear Collective. Well, let me go ahead and tell you why in this review. This is Country Conversations with Diva D. Welcome back to my channel. And let's talk about Basketball Wives of Lando. Season 3, Never Have I Ever. Episode, season 11, episode 3, Never Have I Ever. But the episode opens up with Nick and Mulan. And Nick says she doesn't agree with how Danielle came for Ken. Well, well, well. I see the co-parenting is coming coming on uh and the co-mingling of the family is coming on to work. I mean or coming on to life or whatever, because look at Nick. Man the good co step parent like. I guess that's what you wanna call it. To Nick. You know, she's like, you know, Danielle is 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 coming off kind of petty. Foreshadow, foreshadow, foreshadow. <laughs> okay, and Megan and um then you go to the scene with Megan and Dre and Megan and Dre are out there. They having they having they living their best life, honey. They on a barbecue, Megan is saying she tired of the athletes and she just went on here and got her a regular schmegler. And uh so they out there, they having a good time and she presents him with a pregnancy test. Ooh, this man is nervous, okay? And uh, she knows she's not pregnant, but, you know, hey, you know, drama for the show. And she has an apprentice test, and the apprentice test is negative, and he is relieved. Dre says he's a family man, and he does not see that with me. And then we're going to get to understanding that Meg is not having the best relationship with Mama Bear. Now, now I'm beginning to understand why she don't have a good relationship with Mama Bear. Because it's coming to light that she may have not really been raised by Mama Bear. But Dre doesn't like it. He's encouraging her to, you know, build a relationship with Mama Bear. And then Megan and Confessional says that, I, you know, I'd love to build this relationship with my family. He has a relationship with his family, but I ain't into it. I feel like I'm being forced. And go back to the scene where they out there living their best life with the baked steaks on the grill and they drinking. We find out about the pregnancy test. And so he gives her, uh, she gives him the stick and out of sheer joy, he stirs the stick around and drink and then he tells her, drink it, drink it. And she says, I'm not drinking that. And I don't blame him because it's piss on that stick. But he Pretends like he pours his out and his ass drinks. I guess he says if he's eating her tuscat, then I guess it's okay to drink her pee. All right. <laughs> oh, these people, these young people today, I'm trying to tell you, they tickle me. Danielle and Mulan are next. Danielle and Mulan, she says that, you know, she just, you know, she knows that uh, old girl is a side chick. Okay, she gonna run in the ground that uh, Kenzie is a side chick. Kenzie doesn't think she's a side chick, though. That's the thing about it. And this is where Danielle, and I tried to have so much patience with her last week, and her and Morgan. And this is where they began to get on my nerves. She was like, well, you know, she was a side chick because I showed her the receipts with me and Shy, and uh, she acted like she didn't see him. And then, you know what? Shoot. That, that, if Kenza can't do anything else, she can act like she don't care. Because that's what she acting like, but I'm pretty sure with the annoying way that Danielle is, I'm pretty sure at some point she got on her nerve. And, you know, they're like, it's becoming, it's coming off it's bullying because you know when Danielle and when Danielle and Morgan get together, ain't nothing nobody can do about it. All right, next, Tony and Ashley, they're worried about their son, and this touched my heart because my nephew is autistic. Okay, 
And um, we all were in denial for a long time, but being that I had worked in the mental health fields, I saw some delays there and I charged it. And I encouraged my sister, I said, you know, uh, this is becoming a thing where a lot of black boys are um, being diagnosed with um, autism. Now, I don't know if it's like purely genetic or it may be something, and I don't want to throw the algorithm off. I mean, I mean, I'm not even monetized yet, but when I do get monetized, they will. I look at enough YouTube to know they will go back and pull an old video. <laughs> it's like they did Foggy. That video they pulled on Foggy to take his channel was 13 years old, probably. And they did it anyway, so I'm just going to still be careful with my words. However, she finally takes him to a specialist, and she realizes that he potentially is because he's doing repetitive motion. And that is a lot of the things that my nephew did. Like, and I can speak, hello, YouTube, I can speak on this personally because it happened to me. So, he would, once he learned how to do something, like it was this game called Starfire. And I love game too. Me and him used to play together. But it was this game called Star Fox. He would beat the game repeatedly. And be like, don't you want to play something else besides Star Fox? And he'd play it again. Play it again. And it wasn't bothering him. But once I beat the game, I was through with it, right? But it wasn't bothering him. But if you threw him off and did something different, then, you know, he would be, you know, it would anger him in a way. And so, you know, those types of signs gave me the, the impression that, yeah, he was indeed autistic. And then, you know, he was diagnosed years later. But I had already seen it in him because I, again, am a former mental health professional. Moving right along. So, we have a girl's day out. Uh, and it happens. Everyone is making fun of Ashley, Okay. Because we at the girls' day out, and this is Nick's girls' day out. She organizes this, and they go to a bar. And she was like, well, you know, we out here to have good fun. Let's have some drinks. And here we go. Here go with a mess of uh, stars, right? And it's like, what's that in your hair, Ashley? And my hair keeps getting in my face. <laughs> it's annoying. But anyway, they had this girls' day out, and, um, and Nick organized and everything. And, um, of course, you know, you can't. Go without on these shows, playing that mess game, never have I ever, or something of that nature. They they play different versions of it on um, different shows, but at the same time, it always goes back to being messy. Let me see if I put my toboggan down a little bit, would that help? Nope, that made it work. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they go on and... And I'm just going to get right into the messy questions because, hey, ain't that what you're here for? So they asked the question, you know, have I never have I ever been a side chick? And Kansas didn't raise her hand, and that made dang yeah start getting in her petty messy mode and her and Morgan are over there laughing like they four years old, and they laughing and pointing and talking about Ashley's hair. And it was absolutely positively ridiculous. And um, that just reignited Morgan's petty as well. And then she put in the question, uh, never have I ever set my husband, my, let me get it straight. Never have I ever set up my friend's husband to hook up with other chicks. I'm just going to say it like I know how to say it. I can't get these dead words, but you know, you get the gist of what I'm saying. And, uh, you know, Ashley didn't, have, didn't raise her hand. She was like, well, you know, look at this like this, you know. I don't see that as me hooking him up with anybody. Now, I'm looking at it like this now. now. Now, I'm not saying that Ashley isn't annoying, you know, bragging about herself being the only basketball wife on the show and all that good stuff. But I'm thinking of something here. Now, the way I'm gathering how Mr. Snell is, Perhaps, 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 Mr. Snell would have, not Mr. Snell, but um, uh, Morgan's ex. Let me make sure you understand that I am talking about Morgan's ex, the one that Ashley was hooking women up with. 
she's playing uh, miniature or uh, amateur, the word is amateur, amateur pimp. So, allegedly, I'm going to say that I think that she didn't have to push him into doing anything. He knew he was married. How come he didn't say, Ashley, I just don't want to be around your fine friends, right? Or your fine exotic friends. I'm pretty sure. Well, all them exotics here, you know how the brothers do. You know, them half Jamaican, half Puerto Rican girls. And them half Dominican, half Puerto Rican girls. Allegedly. Because I don't know what Ashley Snell's ethnicity is. However, it's coming off as exotic. Do, do you ever wonder if an athlete says to himself, maybe I'll try something different? And knowing that very dark skinned women to Caucasian men are exotic. Did you know that? Do you ever wonder if they might say to themselves, hey, let me try a dark skinned Sudanese? Africana beauty. You ever think about that? Put something on your mind. But anyway, um, Ashley leaves her hand down and then Morgan calls her fake. See, this is what Morgan getting on my nerves. First of all, you laughing at the girl hair. Now you calling her fake because she leave her hand down. She don't feel like she did anything. And like I said, I don't think she had to do much work to hook this fella up. Moving right along to the next scene. Megan meets with her brother. Next. <laughs> I'm just saying she meets with her brother to solidify that she felt neglected because he was the chosen one. And that is how it is in a lot of African-American homes. Even though um, the brother can be, you know, bothered bothering the mother or he could be doing whatever it's something about the bond between a mother and her son naturally that causes her to especially if she has tension with that daughter cause her to actually literally bump heads with that daughter okay but anyway moving right along from that nikki nick and mulan they meet and Nikki says that she's heard that there's been a lot of bullying going on. And Morgan says, Morgan denies. Then say, Nikki's like, y'all weren't talking about Ashley's hair. And she was like, well, you know. But she didn't really answer the question. She sidestepped the question because she know she was indeed being a bully, in my opinion. Uh, and I say, well... As far as the questions go, a lot of those questions were made up by me. Are we surprised? Because like I said in the previous episode, she is Shawnee's puppet, just like Giselle is Andy's puppet. And what do puppets do? They get the mess started. And when they get the mess started, they throw the rocks, they hide the hands. And Megan used to be in the mess, but now she's the mess starter, which Carlos King calls the what, everybody? Force multiplier. <laughs> but Nikki wants to be neutral, wants things to be neutral. And Mulan, Mulan allegedly wants things to be neutral, but we'll find out later that uh, Morgan is beginning to think that Mulan is indeed playing both sides of the fence. And here's where things get sticky. Icky, icky, y'all. Okay. Mulan and Danny shoot around. Now, as I've said many, many times, when I see that faux butt of Mulan's, I get nervous. The thing, when she dribbles, it bounces like the ball. I mean... Like this. I promise. I saw. <laughs> I saw on this episode of the remake of um, She's Got to Have It. Where the girl was spinning on the pole because she went and got the BBL. And all the stuff that all the fat they had put in her behind. She was dreaming and it 
it burst all over the audience when she fell down off the pole and her behind started leaking. I promise every time I see Milan, I think about that. I can't help it. Now, <laughs> and uh, see, again, Danny's back there. She got the screw face, right? Because, you know, they talking about yet again, Kenzie. Girl, you did your thing at the uh, girls meet up at the bar. And now we at the doggone shoot around and you should be shooting and you should, should be talking about um, Mulan's get together, but you can't talk about Mulan's get together because you're talking about how much she hurt you. And what did you expect? Now, let me ask you this. Did you think that you were going to break up Rashad and Kenzie throwing those text messages up? Uh, Mackenzie comes to me off as like the type of chick to be like, baby, you don't have to do more than show me some receipts. And Milan says, look, you know, I'm tired of the mess. I just want things to be smooth. Let's try one more time and have this dinner. And there is Danny at the free throw line with the ball under her arm. Screw face on camera. Girl, you're too cute. To be looking like a mad duck every week. Snap out of it. Show Mackenzie that you're not bothered by her because she thinks that you are. Girl, listen to this OG. Literally, I'm telling you what I know. You can't let them see you sweat, especially the new chick. If you think you, she's the side chick, prove it. I guarantee you, if what you're saying is true, what I know from men, all you got to do is play yourself to the left and to the right. And in the words of Beyonce, to the left, to the left. Get your own things to the left, to the left. And if it's meant to be, it will be. I can assure you. If you are saying that she is the side chick, if he wants you, he will be with you. And you will take him back. Now, that's where things can get sticky, icky, y'all. Because if you get up enough cojones, and not cojones, I mean, but JJ, yeah, as the good late Rose. Said from Golden Girls, <laughs> Miss Betty White. What did she say? It's the vagina that takes the pounding. Nuts are weak. Grow a vagina. Show them that you don't care. And even if you do, act like you don't. Move right along. So Nikki and Morgan are over there getting their makeup done. Morgan, you got one more thing to do. Because I'm already irritated with you to the highest level of positivity by talking about that girl's hair. And it wasn't that the hair was cute. And it wasn't that you had to say something or anything like that. It irritated me that y'all was sitting over there drinking and snickering like you were four years old. That's what bothered me. And I'm sure that is turning a lot of the audience off to you who really wanted you to be that girl. From episode one and then episode one and a half. <laughs> you had me. Right around halfway midpoint of episode two. You started getting on my nerves. Now you at episode three. And you almost on my list. <laughs> For real. Uh, so anyway. Uh, so Nick says that, you know, if anything... She says, well, you know, you're being accused of being a bully. And Morgan fixed her mouth to say, if anybody is getting bullied, it's me. Ashley has zero people on her team. Don't be the shiny of this show. Because I started off like a shiny. <laughs> okay. Don't be the shiny of this show. Mm-hmm.
Or should I say her sidekick? Shoot. Hold on a second. My neighbor calling me to let me know that I left the lights on in my car. Well, let me finish this little piece. Because <laughs> I was about done. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking down at the phone. I'm not cutting it out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, when he's calling. Of course, you know me. I'm looking down at the phone for my notes. But anyway, uh, and she says that if anybody's been bullied, it's her. And then Morgan says... Uh, Mulan is too fast. And that's where the drama is going to continue to ensue. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Country Conversations with D with D. Come on in. Come on in. Get the likes up. Get the likes up. And again, you're commercial free because I am not monetized. However, if you get the likes up and the subscriptions up, I may get there.